And welcome back. Time for this week's Capital Report with Pat McGuigan of CapitalBeatOK.com. Pat, obviously a lot going on at the Capitol right now. A couple of things that uh, people might uh, not notice might fly under the radar if we didn't uh, pay particular attention. One of them, e-cigarettes. We've talked about this a lot, but we was on the agenda at the Capitol this week. What happened? It's very interesting. You know, the personal vaporizers, e-cigarettes, electronic smoking devices. Um, Governor Fallon banned them on public property in an executive order last winter. Uh, Health Secretary Klein wants regulations of them comparable to those that are on tobacco. Uh, she's, um, the, the, there's agreement at the Capitol to treat it as an adult product so that youth don't have access to it, and that's where the agreement really ends. There's a lot of debate when you get past that point. Um, the advocates of e-cigarettes and their allies in the legislature want to provide protections for vape, vapor products, as they're called. Uh, there is a bill, there was a bill, that would treat ESDs as the equivalent of tobacco for purposes of regulation. What survived so far and passed 37 to 2 was a bill from Senator Rob Johnson, SB 1602, that would... Um, that took out smokeless tobacco from any kind of uh, gentler treatment and focused just on e-cigarettes, the ban on youth uh, consumption, but also um, some protections from this kind of march that's been funded by the Tobacco Settlement Endowment Trust to equate e-cigarettes with uh, tobacco products. So the state of play right now is that there is a live round that the legislature will be considering further. It's gone over to the House uh, to achieve that purpose. Uh, and that would it maybe slow down this anti-e-cigarette juggernaut until the FDA or somebody uh, authoritatively speaks on it. Okay. Uh, pay for success. You reported on this proposed uh, pay for success last week. A start on implementation of the Justice Reinvestment Initiative. What happened on that this week? Uh, you know, $2 million may not sound like a lot of money, but um, oh, we, if you have an effective program and you can help to finance that, $2 million can do a lot of good. And the two, a $2 million revolving fund is uh, proposed in Senate legislation sponsored by Senator Kim David that would create a fund which would pay out upon completion of agreed upon objectives in a signed contract, uh, the one group that seems to qualify is Women in Recovery that I've talked about many times on this program, a group out of Tulsa. And WIR could get reimbursement for a portion of what they spend on women who otherwise would be incarcerated in regular prisons, but who get life skills counseling, drug and alcohol addiction, um, prevention, and uh, reunification with their family, all kinds of specific objectives uh, spelled out in this legislation. And it passed 43 to nothing in the state Senate. That is a very good sign. Senator Bingman, the pro tem, uh, said he supports it fully. Uh, Senator Brinkley uh, said it's the most important thing we can do up this year, do up at the legislature this year. And then on the other side of the aisle, Sean Burridge said this is a great people for people who don't have lobbyists. This is a great bill for people who need this approach as an alternative to incarceration and don't even know they need it yet because they haven't gotten in trouble, but they're on their way to getting in trouble. This is a very important step forward. If it passes both chambers, I believe the governor will sign it and it will be implemented. Uh, you know, at the national level this past week at the conservative uh, uh, at CPAC conference in Washington, Governor Rick Perry was bragging, and justifiably so, on the revolution in corrections Texas has administered over the last 10 years, it can be done, and it can be done in a tough on crime, smart on crime, conservative state like Oklahoma. Oh, needs to be done here. All right, Common Core. Uh, we don't have a lot of time left, but uh, some some big news on this. Summarize where things stand. In the House, with the Speaker taking the lead, this is pretty high high drama actually in terms of public policy. Seventy-eight to twelve legislation passed that essentially repeals Common Core and sets out an objective to establish state-based standards for education. Then in the Senate, uh, Senate Bill 1764 that eventually was aimed at repealing Common Core was pulled at the last minute. So now the negotiations are going to be between substantial amendments 
and repeal. That's dramatic. And I want to say one thing. When you have a coalition that ranges from Jeff Hickman all the way over to Joe Dorman, you're not tinfoil. You don't have tinfoil hats. You're not watching for black helicopters. You're reflecting a passion and concern about public policy that is bipartisan and across the spectrum. That's why the Common Core is in trouble. All right, you can read more about these and other topics at capitaldokay.com. For Pat McGuigan, I'm Alex Cameron. Have a great day.